Okay, uh, my name is Jim Atkins. Thanks for joining me today, and all of you people who are viewing. And uh, I'm going to give you a brief overview of a breeding strategy. And uh, I have a few people here that are wanting to learn, so I'm basically going to teach them, and all of you will benefit from this. So, uh, for those of you who've never bred chickens before, um, the most common question is how many chicks should I start out with? How many day old baby chicks should I start with? And um, let me take a deep breath. I'm getting ready to tell you. You want to start with, now before you write me off, okay, you want to start with a hundred baby chicks. Now let me explain before you get too carried away and say, oh, my yard's not big enough or I've never done a hundred baby chicks. There's let me walk you through this process. So, you're getting 100 baby chicks, and let's just say the breed you're getting is Bard Plymouth Rock, which is one of my all-time favorite breeds of chicken. So, Bard Plymouth Rock, okay? And you're going to get straight run, which means straight run means that you're going to have a mixture of both males and females. So let's just assume, for the sake of illustration, that you're going to get 50 males and 50 females. Okay? That's straight run. Now, that'll fluctuate one way or another. You may get more males than you do females, or more females than you do males. But, for illustration's sake, you're getting 50 males and 50 females. Now, I'm actually going to move this down here. 50 males... 50 females. I want to avoid that little shade up there. So now with this particular breed, the 50 males, you're going to select them. That means you're going to figure out which males you're going to keep and which males you're going to get rid of at about 16 to 18 weeks. All right. So roughly what? Four months. So at that time, you're going to keep five of those males. Five out of the 50 males you're going to keep. That means you have 45 males to get rid of. Are you tracking with me? Make sense? So these 45 males, you are you got a couple of options. You can eat them, use them for home consumption, learn how to process on farm, do it yourself. That's fun. I really don't like that, but that's one of your options, all right? Or... You may uh, have somebody who has a farmer's market and somebody who has a little, you know, sustainable stand somewhere and they may want to buy those birds. The other option is you may want to take some of these males, process them yourself and make some connections with potential uh, chefs because chefs need to learn how to cook an old heritage breed, which is totally different than if you are growing out a fast-growing Cornish cross. You cook them totally differently. So, that's what you can do. So you're down to five males, and 40, you're getting rid of those 45 males. That's at the 16 to 18 week mark, all right? The females, you're gonna select them at about 26 to 28 weeks with this particular breed, okay? 26 to 28 weeks, so at somewhere around your six month, five to six month mark, that's when you're going to select the females, okay? So, when it comes time to select the females, you're going to break them into what I call uh, breeding families or pens, all right? So, we got pen number one, pen number two, and pen number three. And what you're going to do, you're going to have to think through this in advance on how you're going to, you know, Divide up these three families. You're going to build a permanent structure. You're going to have, uh, you know, a, a mobile unit that moves around on pasture. But we'll cover that some other time because we're just talking about these breeding families at the moment. So you have 50 females. Okay, just for illustration's sake. Actually, let me back up. These five males. All right here. I'm going to put one male in pen one, one male in pen two and one male in pen three. So that leaves you with two extra males, okay? So you're 
Those two extra males, you might ask the question, well, I only need three for breeding, why am I keeping five? Well, there's a couple reasons. One is because this is your foundation stock, this is your first batch of chicks, you don't know how these males are going to produce when it comes to fertility. You don't know what their uh, vigor is going to be like. Are they going to be birds that are productive when it comes to mating? You don't know that. So it's good to have a couple backup males. Another reason why you want to keep a couple backup males is we have these things we call predators. Coons, coyotes, neighbors' dogs, those kinds of things. You never know when you might lose a male. So we want to keep a couple of males uh, to have our, our, a backup plan. The third thing is, is there are times, well actually with every breeding flock, sometimes the best males don't really manifest themselves until they're older. When they're a year old or 18 months old or sometimes even two year old males, there's a possibility that I may say, wow, you know, uh, I may number these males one through five, the best to the worst, all right? And so what happens is, if this is the best male, a year later, I might say, oh, I really like one of these males better, okay? So the top, the order of the males can change based on age. So another huge benefit to keeping those five males, okay? So now let's talk female. So at, at 26 to 28 weeks, just for illustration's sake, I'm going to make this even, all right, to explain it. I'm going to put 10 females in pen 1, I'm going to put 10 females in pen 2, and I'm going to put 15 females in pen 3. Now you want to keep this in mind. A barred Plymouth Rock, a good male who has good vigor, uh, a bird that you would select as being a good breeder, he should be able to mate with about 12 to 15 females, okay? So this is the max that I'm ever going to put into a pen with one breeding male. So pen one, one male, 10 females. Pen two, one male, 10 females. Pen three, one male, 15 females. So that leaves me, I've got 35 breeders breeding females and the five males. So now I'm down to 40 chickens. So even though you got 100 birds, I went from 100 to 40 within six months, okay? If you start smaller than that, it just limits you in your gene pool. You want to remember, I would even say the more baby chicks you can get initially, the better. But a minimum, I would encourage you to start with 100, okay? So what do you do with these extra, if you, got, if you put 35 of them, in those three breeding pens, you've got an extra 15 females. What are you gonna do with those? You can sell them, you can put them out uh, on your pasture and have an, an additional breeding, or a, a egg laying flock, okay? So, or, you know, there's tons of options there. If you keep them, you can put those extra two males on those females, they can be out run in the pasture and you're not going to be hatching from them, but they might be good egg producers. So you've got some options there on what you can do with them. Once you've set up these three pens, we're going to call this these three pens your, out of this 100 chicks, those are your foundation stock. Okay? And then, so let's say you get these chicks in the spring, that's typically when most people get their birds, all right? And then uh, 16 weeks, 16 to 18 weeks, you're going to do the males, 26 to 28 weeks. So then you're going to be into, so let's just say May, June, July, August, September, you're going to start to get some egg production. I want those, egg, those hens to be laying for a while. Um, and these, I won't actually start hatching until the hatching season typically People are gearing up in January, February, March, but by March, you know, depending on where you live, you really want to be prepared to start hatching your next generation of birds, okay? There's something I missed that I want to go back to. The reason I'm waiting 26 to 28 weeks on the females is because I want these birds to be finished growing. You remember, a hen stops growing 
when she starts laying eggs. So this is about when I hope she'll start laying eggs. It, it might vary a little bit based on the line. They might start a little sooner. Some of them might go a little later. I'm just giving you an approximate. But that's when I want to select these birds is when they are finished growing, they start into production so I can do a, a complete assessment on what those females look like. That's why I'm waiting for 26 to 28 weeks. Okay? So, you selected your males, you selected your females, you're setting up your three pins, and you ask the question, well, how many baby chicks then should I hatch from each group? My response is uh, two things. Whatever the amount of chicks you should hatch is determined by your budget and your space. How much budget, how much can you afford to feed, grow the birds out, and how much space do you have? And let's just say you decide to do 50 chicks for each of these families or each of these breeding pens. 50, 50, 50. So you're hatching a total of 150 chicks the following spring or the following hatching season. Now I've got 150 birds of my first generation for my foundation stock to begin to select and continue to build my breeding strategy. Now, it's very important that you find a mentor, someone who knows this breed and knows how to select them and knows how to pick the best males and the best females who can come alongside of you and help you in this process. All right? And you're actually the second generation, you are, you know, after you hatch these, this first generation, the next time you set up breeding pens, you're going to use old birds and young birds in breeding pens. And that process, I'm not going to get into that now because I just want to give you the overview, but that is all part of what your coach can tell you in the process of setting up the breeding pens along the way. So, brief overview. Get 100 chicks, you're going to end up with 50 males, 50 females, you grow them out. The males you're going to pick out, select at 16 to 18 weeks of age. The females about 10 weeks later, okay, 26 to 28 weeks. And then you want them to lay for, you want them laying for a couple of months to get a good egg size so then you can begin hatching. And once you've done that, you have become a breeder hatching your own birds which is awesome. So there's a lot more details into that, but that's the overview. And um, stay tuned for a lot more to come. You have a question? Yeah. Yes. Do you have to do three pens? You don't have to do three pens, but um, there's some potential major bottleneck issues there. Let me explain that. Okay. One of the bottleneck issues, if you said, I only want to breed one pen with one male and one female. Here's the danger. You don't know what this male can produce. It's unknown. Okay, so there's a possibility that he may not be all that good. So you want to create genetic diversity. All right, putting all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> all right, counting on this male. I'll give you an illustration as I told a gal I was coaching somebody once and I found this incredible Bard Plymouth Rock male. And I said to this, to this gal, just keep the eggs from this male. Only hatch from this male. Don't worry about any other males. Actually, she might have even gotten rid of them all. And this male produced terrible chicks, terrible females. They weren't, they weren't good. So it really put, it set us back in our breeding program. Okay? I would actually say that a minimum of three pens. Actually, good genetic guys and breeders say you should have about six pens, a minimum of six. But I'm in, in, in smaller scale. I'm going to help you to start with just doing three families or three breeding pens and keeping your genetic diversity with those three males. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. Any other questions from the audience? <laughs> Woohoo! All right, stay tuned. Uh, there's a lot more to come. This will be fun.